Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, all this past week and for the past two or three weeks, we've been highlighting and premiering uh, about the exciting upcoming of a radio documentary of season two of our Stargate Cod Classics uh, documentary. Season one that we did over last year was a huge success. We had over 38 episodes. We had everyone from Tony Amadola to Terry Rocher uh, to Tori Higginson to Joe Flanagan and the list, uh, Alexis Cruz, the list goes on and on. And we're back for a season two after much anticipated demand. Uh, we have a great show lined up with some superstars uh, of the entertainment business coming up on season two so far. But for this particular episode, I'm delighted to be joined uh, by the one and only J.R. Bourne. If you remember J.R. Bourne uh, in terms of his role in Stargate SG-1, he played the Tokra and the character, uh, his symbiote host, uh, Martouf and Lantesh. Uh, he appeared in over seven uh, episodes in total. Uh, he appeared in season two, season three, season four and season nine uh, in total of his appearances uh, in Stargate at SG-1. And JR, starting off uh, for you, obviously, I know you're based in Los Angeles now, but going back when Stargate was in its infancy, uh, obviously season one was such a huge success. Were you based around Vancouver or British Columbia at the time when season two was coming about? And had you tried out for roles in terms of characters for season one already? Yes, James. Uh, uh, how are you, man? Nice to see you. Uh, and I watched some of your other videos, which is uh, awesome. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, Mr. Stebbings in his car. Ah, Peter. Um, I was living in Vancouver and uh, I think the first I, I auditioned for uh, Shanks, for Michael Shanks's role. Okay. In the very beginning. And, you know, I think to help keep my sanity from, you know, I was knocking on wood there, from the very beginning, whenever there was a role and still a role that I, that I, that I want, but then I see who gets it. Uh, uh, the majority of the time, I'm like, yep, that's the right person. So uh, uh, I thought that Michael was great. And then getting to work with him in second, you know, their second year, uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And Martouf and Lantash, I mean, uh, I love those guys. So I think I got the role I was meant to get. And in terms of uh, Martouf and Lantash, in terms of season two, you obviously, you did you, were you recommended for those roles or did you come back and audition for them again? James, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know if I auditioned for Mark Toof. I'm, 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 I probably did. I probably did. I actually don't remember. It's a great question. Okay, no yeah. problem. And uh, in terms of Stargate SG-1, there was two major sort of sci-fi shows in British Columbia and Vancouver at that time. It was either Stargate and Battlestar Galactica. There were sort of the two major sort of sci-fi shows and it made careers and household names for an awful lot of the cast members who were on those sort of shows. And uh, did you feel basically having Stargate on your resume and having those seven episodes as a young actor at the time, obviously you've probably done a few parts before Stargate, do you feel it opened up doors for you? I, I mean, you can look at, say, what Stargate did for some people's careers, and then you look about Star Galactica, what it did for Katie Sackhoff's career and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Uh, did you, for you, how was that personal experience? Did you Were you able to rub off the effect of it? I, I don't... <clears throat> I don't think I was conscious at the time that this might lead to more in, you know, in a world of sci-fi or, or, uh, or supernatural, whereas, you know, where I kind of, I think primarily went with my career, you know, in that supernatural world, but it didn't at the time, uh, did I think this is going to lead more to this world? I, uh, I remember being excited. It took me like a, a, a couple of beats, you know, doing Stargate a couple episodes in to realize what, show I was on, you know, growing up with my father and watching Star Trek and being such a huge fan of, you know, the original William Shatner Star Trek and, mm -hmm. and sci-fi in itself. So uh, consciously, no, I don't know that I was like, okay, this is going to open doors for me as my career continues. But looking back, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I surely don't think it hurt it. That's for sure. 
Mm. And obviously, when you sort of got cast uh, for the role in Stargate and obviously working alongside Richard Dean Anderson, obviously knowing him from uh, MacGyver or sort of such, where you always feel to yourself like, I'm going to be a sponge around him, just try and take mm. in as much as I possibly can and try and see what lessons I can get off him that might come to avail for me for further degrees because obviously the Jack O'Neill character was larger than life and he took that in a different way than it was portrayed in the movie it was more hardline military dictated he made a whole comedian type effect out of the character yeah. as well like you know yeah she's another great question James again at the time uh <clears throat> I think a default setting for me it's still is uh to observe and to to you know absorb so yes on on some sort of you know uh um default setting for me i'm constantly watching everybody that has been doing something longer than me and 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 you know making notes and 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 uh you know uh, processing all of them uh uh everybody on that set amanda chris michael um definitely richard how everybody you know just behaved and moved and, 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 you know, portrayed their characters. And, um, so yeah, great freaking learning lesson. And still to this day, like I said, James, I think that's just a default setting for me. Um, I'm constantly wanting to learn more and absorb more. Do you know what I mean? How does this person do this? How does this person approach this? And uh, Gr, in terms of your characters, Martouf and Lantish, did you try and sort of give them two sort of split personalities, obviously, in terms of how you're portraying two individuals within the one body? Obviously, the Gaul sort of vice, uh, Tokra sort of vice thing that they had was projected onto your character afterwards. You didn't obviously hear that at the time. You had no way of knowing how that sort of sounded. Did you feel right when you were, when you were told, right, it's going to be the talk right that's speaking now, did you feel that you had sort of hunch your shoulders and put on a more broad, huskier sort of tone, even though that you couldn't even hear us, but you feel that you right, I have to give off this sort of an effect? Uh, I, I remember when they said, here's what we're going to do, here's how we're going to modulate, and 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 here's the difference between these two people, Martouf and Lantash, and we didn't, I've always sort of said, you know, uh, as I've been asked, you know, over the years at conventions, what, you know, uh, uh, what would you want to explore more? Lantash, you know, that role, that character. I, I don't remember. It was primarily always Martouf, I felt like, you know. Um, so Lantash, I, I don't remember being in, you know, that role uh, uh, too much. But yes, when they told me the voice was going to be modulated, I just was like, all right, so I don't need to. I don't need to do anything necessarily. No, we're going to do all that. And I was like, okay, great. Because, uh, you know, that was early in my career. I, I'm, uh, I, I, was, I was nervous. I was shy. I was insecure of everything. So, you know, one less thing that I had to do. So this is going to be taken care of afterwards and post. Okay, great. So I, I'll just focus on, on, uh, on, on, on trying to do a good job and keeping up with all these pros around me. I don't remember changing too much more about, you know, my voice or delivery or, or mannerisms. I think I got a little more intense, maybe, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, if I, uh, once I knew they were going to do it afterwards, I was like, all right, good. Let me just focus on not shitting my pants here uh, every day that I'm on set with these people. <laughs> and uh, JR, in terms of um, Stargate and SG-1, and obviously we all know as actors and actresses, you play portray roles and characters and you're defined to the script, whatever's the script is there in front of you. Did yourself and Amanda Tapping start, find that sort of amusing to play, that sort of chemistry between you? Did you find it split-taking, sort of laughing between sets to sort of portray that sort of flirting chemistry that was going on and off uh, the whole time? Did you, did you get a kick out of that? Yes, my God, yeah, are you kidding me? And she, her and I bonded the most. And she, uh, gosh, she, she just, I have a lot of great stories from her. Because I had also just come, when we first started, I just come back from um, dealing with some family stuff. And she was very embracing and and uh and all of my insecurities and the shit that was going on in me and being early she very much um 
just gave me sort of a, a you know a, every ounce of confidence and support and so I had an amazing amazing freaking time working with her uh and and that includes you know not just the heavy stuff but the light stuff as well most definitely and the confusion of is it her that's having these feelings for Martouf or is it the the the, the you know the the residue memories of Jean Lennard so uh most definitely she came back and directed me in an episode of the hundred and that was freaking awesome okay yeah okay. getting directed by her was amazing and uh jr in terms of every character now doesn't like first of all when you hear the news death scene you're thinking to yourself right <laughs> that means i ain't coming back mm -hmm. in terms of my time in the series but also where characters think well if i'm going to go out i want to go out on a high i want to go out in the best way sort of possible i want to that death scene to be sort of memorable. Were you yeah. hard about it first of all when you saw the script and you write, right, they're killing off uh, your character? First of all, what was your initial reaction then? Then when you heard how it was going to go down in terms of that sort of scene where you start thinking, yeah, that's a cool way to go out uh, for my character or I'm going to get some kick out of that and the sort of twist that come, this unexpected twist at the end, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh... <clears throat> Again, it was so early on in my career, James, <clears throat> that, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Peter called me, uh, uh, Peter Deloise called, was it Peter or Martin? I think Peter did, and said, hey, you know, we're coming up and we got we to gotta kill somebody off, and so we're going to kill Martouf off because, you know, uh, uh, it, it, we, we think this will be the best thing, we're going to do it in a sort of Manchurian candidate kind of, you know, way, and you'll be... And I was like, amazing. Uh, I, I wasn't shocked. I, I you know, I, I just sort of accept, accepted that. And I was like, okay. And um, the maturing candidate, obviously familiar with that movie. And so, okay, that sounds cool. And, uh, and then when we were doing it, 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 it was, it felt, it felt great. It felt grand. Everybody was there. It was Amanda that had to do it. That was emotional and in her arms and, you know, the camera coming up and seeing everybody there. I was like, all right, this is awesome. And I was like, bye, everybody. Thank you for a great, great seven, eight episodes. And, you know, moving on. Um, yeah, yeah. And in portraying those sort of emotions in terms of your death scene and going through it, you're almost sort of fighting this sort of your body in terms of the way it sort of went down in terms of you were under this sort of control device. Obviously, you weren't, but trying to project that as a sort of an actor was that sort of fun in terms of how many takes you had to try and get angles and that because it almost felt like you wanted to self explode or terminate but you couldn't and then yeah. you wanted to stay but you had to go sort of sort of thing like you know how did you feel that you were how did you feel to yourself well the night before the shoot how am I going to get this because I'm sort of fighting my body in one sense yeah, that's a great question, James. Uh, I, you know, listen, I, as much as I, like I said, I accept the, the news that Martouf was dying and then that was it. It was a fun run and let's move on. Um, uh, and it served the purpose of the biggest story on the show. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 all the other uh, characters. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, fighting, <laughs> fighting, wanting to stay alive or fighting, you know, uh, uh, whatever that sort of narrative is in my head. Um, uh, I can't, I can't do much about that. Like you said, you know what I mean? I can't self-implode. I can't, I can't do any of that. So it's, um, uh, I, I think that we played it that once Amanda shot me, it shut down whatever control was, you know, was controlling Martouf. And then it was, you know, me and her, uh, and me and her arms, and uh, gosh, now I'm gonna have to go back and watch that that scene. Um, and then I think it was just, you know, us there, and I'm just like, all right, this seems good for her too, <laughs> you know. But yes, could I have fought it? Wish I could have done something different, James. Please, all the time, all the time. <laughs> and uh, 
JR, one of the things that struck me, and I suppose you might be able to enlighten our audience and probably Stargate fans want, probably want to know, I know there's so many studios and so many lost in terms of where Stargate was shot in terms of, and in the outdoor sort of locations. But one thing I started wondering in terms of these sort of Tokra sort of tunnels in terms of what they actually did look like. Were they sort of blue cardboard sort of coming down? Was it sort of frosting sort of thing or in terms of the walls, what did they actually sort of, the set look like? Was it just the corridor that was sort of? No, we found the real tunnels of the Tokra and that's where we yeah. shot them, James. It was yeah. all the real thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the real deal, yeah. Yeah, cardboard, what are you talking about? No <laughs> cardboard. It was, you know, we went to other planets and they found uh, the Tokra tunnels. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> No, and in terms of set design, it's all just yes. so many wonderful sets in Stargate. It would just Listen. sort of struck me in terms of was it a, a connecting between one set to the other sort of set in terms of a corridor? Or how did it actually sort of li link out? It, this is this is I don't want to give. Listen, the 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 crew, the the everybody behind Stargate SG One, brilliant. You know, when you're in it and you're looking at this set and it looks in, you know, a certain way, um, uh, when the show is, then when it's aired and, and, you know, they put on all their magic and their post and it's incredible how real it all looks. I'd love us all to believe that they really were tunnels, James, and we really were going through a Stargate. Uh, but that is just the, the you know, the, um, the amazing, talented individuals that make it all sort of, you know, look so real did any of them lead uh i don't remember you know i'd love to sort of say yes one of the tunnels led to the back of the stargate but i it wasn't anything like that or to the restroom because i always have to pee because i drink so much water but no it wasn't that either <laughs> uh, every set led from richard every set led from richard's trailer onto so that we just from him he could just come in and enter whatever set was needed that's not true, but how cool would that be? <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. JR, two final questions for you now before yeah. I let you go. Uh, the first sort of question for you is, uh, let's pretend there was a Stargate encyc uh, encyclopedia, a dictionary as sort of such, and they put every sort of fictional character in that sort of dictionary, and they put your character, Martu Flantesh, in that encyclopedia dictionary, and they left two blank sentences underneath it, a synopsis as such. And the talent agent came to you, J.R. Bourne, and they said, we want you to write those two sentences to summarize uh, mm. what type of character Matt Tooth and Lantush was like. What would you like those two sentences to read? Woo! And it's for Martu and Lantash? Well, in terms of if you want yes. to specifically go with that sort of maybe a sentence each, maybe, to describe. It's both. All right. Uh, um, uh, Martuf. Uh, Martouf and Lantash, uh, they loved, they laughed. Lantash would have liked to have fought harder. Oh, that's not bad, right? Period. Period. And uh, JR, before I let you go now for the final 30 seconds, <laughs> Is yes. there any sort of a uh, story or memory or a laugh or a good time or camaraderie that happened on take that is unique to you in terms of Stargate that people don't know about or aware of? Uh, maybe an interaction with Christopher George, maybe an interaction with that. Something that makes you laugh or smile to this day or when you think of Stargate back to time makes you burst out laughing or something that's so unique to you or just totally out there. Yes, James, there are many. <laughs> There are many, and many that, uh, you know, just- You could write a book that, about us. <laughs> exactly, walk that fine line of what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. But uh, yeah, man, I, on and off that freaking set, Amanda and Chris, um, um, Michael and Richard, yeah, incredible. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. And there was one, there was, no, I can't. I can't, I don't think I can, <laughs> but there's one, Peter always had me in the, Peter could make me laugh with just a look. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I grew up with watching his father as well. So that, that was a huge, and there was one 
one episode he was directing me in and, and I remember he just yelled something from, I was coming out of the gate and walking down the stairs and I was seeing uh, Sam for the first time and it was, you know, we hadn't seen each other in a little bit. And it was, you know, it was that love that he felt for, you know, for, for Joel and I and Peter was yelling notes from the other room. And, uh, and one of them, he said, let's go again. And, and, and uh, I'll leave it a blank for you to fill in, try it. And then he said something and I went, all right. Wait. <laughs> and my mind just started to, you know, unravel with uh, how funny the note was, how funny the direction was, but at the same time, it made complete sense. And I knew what he was asking for. More fun for you to try to figure out what that was, right? Okay, so there's a, a memory for our audience to start to decipher the code in terms of you'll be giving cryptic treats now, J.R. Byrne, in terms of what it might be Emma, to draw in more followers for, uh, for yourself to undiscover that sort of story. But time, unfortunately, has caught up with us for this evening, J.R. Byrne. Thanks for sharing your memories of your time on Stargate HG1. Seven episodes in total, uh, appearing as Mark Tooth and Lantish. Uh, an enjoyable experience for you nonetheless you clearly loved your time on that show and uh, no doubt with a new movie and a, a new TV series rumoured to be in the works uh, we might mm. see a reincarnation dare I say of the character uh, Martu who knows the Simbi Atlantis might be still out there somewhere uh, still in a jar somewhere preserved oh. uh, to, fi to, fight, <laughs> to fight another day but for the moment okay. J.R. Byrne thank you God bless and stay safe Thank you, James. Be well. Cheers.